Hello all and welcome back to another video. Today, as you can see, we pulled the freshly restored Z50 out of the shed and we're going to be using the Prusa Mini and some black ASA filament to see if we can find a cool solution to fit this number plate to the bike. This bike is fully road legal and what I don't want to do is drill or modify that lovely original rear fender for the sake of fitting a number plate. So I thought, let's do two things, test out some ASA on the Prusa Mini and see how it prints and challenge ourselves to design a part that will fit just using this oval hole and allow us to mount the plate. And it all starts off by taking some measurements. Obviously everything is a weird shape, nothing is square, so I'm using some string, my calipers and a steel rule to try and get the basics and give myself something to work off. At this point it's purely a concept and I'm just toying with the ideas in my head how this could possibly work. What I did establish is that the fender shape is one of the most important features as I need to mount off that. So all of my focus start would be on designing a part that would mount to this rear fender and give me a good base to work off. As you've seen, we have taken a load of measurements from the bike and now we need to take them and stick them into CAD and validate that what we've measured is actually going to be right. So before we jump into this final model on my screen, I'm going to knock up some templates that I can print just to validate that what I've measured is actually going to fit onto the bike. So we're going to hop into CAD, I'm going to show you these templates, we're going to print them quickly in ASA and then we're going to validate and move on to our final design which on the screen behind me which does look very cool. So let's get into CAD and have a look at what we're designing. And here is the first piece of the puzzle. It looks very simple but it is essentially going to be the profile of my fender. So taking a closer look this is how I've started. I've taken that radius from the centre line of the axle to the wheel which worked out to be a 600mm diameter or 300mm radius and we're using that as the base for our model. And what I can do is print this and that will give me validation that that curvature is correct. As touched on before, we're going to be printing in some ASA Jet Black Prusament today and as part of this video I really want to prove that you can print well with the Prusa Mini using ASA material. And following that, I also want to look at smoothing these parts so we can go from a printed part with layers to a smoothed injection molded style part. With that print all sorted, we can now go back to the bike and check that the fitment is good. And I was pretty happy of this. Um, there's a tiny bit of flex to compress it down, but I think that will work well. Now that we have confirmed the profile is correct, we can go through and I will show you how we've gone from that initial shape to this final part. Uh, it looks complex, but when broken down into small stages, it is very simple and hopefully captures all of the requirements we need. We are going to start off by dragging the feature tree to the top and starting with this contour profile that we created in the first place. From here we are going to add a feature on the bottom which locates into the fender. It starts off as an extrusion and we add fillets so it matches that whole shape. From here I've also added an extrusion moving upwards and this essentially acts as a base to give me something to build the number plate support off. So we move forwards and we have a sketch that is extruded off of this surface. And the biggest issue here was just working around a curved surface. So the way we modelled it, we had to make sure that our planes and our drawings were correct and we weren't doing anything that was off at a weird angle because essentially we want to mount the fender but we also want to make sure the plate is visible. And with the base design nailed down, it's time to start the printing and fix any issues as we go. As many of you are aware, before a part can be printed, we need to create some G-code to allow the printer to work. So we start by bringing a part into the printer slicer and deciding about how we're going to position this part on the bed. I've decided to go with the top flattest face downwards for a couple of reasons. One, it's a good large surface area that gives us good adhesion to the bed. 
and with the design of this part it also means we can have supports coming up at the sides. So I get that positioned and I put my settings in. We've gone for a 0.1 um, layer height with 10% infill, a brim and supports everywhere. This is my go-to and I think this is going to give us the best chance to get a solid print. This isn't conventional, there's a lot of complexity here so let's see how the printer performs with this first print and if we do have success. This print is started off by putting some print stick on the smooth sheet. Uh, this is to ensure that the print sticks down to the bed. From previous experience, it is very common that ASA will lift off. So as these first layers go down, you really want to keep an eye on it and just make sure that your print is sticking to the bed. Um, I did have a case before this where I didn't glue it well enough and it just didn't stick properly. But as the print progresses, you can see how the supports come to life with that sort of strip back and forward pattern and the part builds up from that base. Um, but it's looking good. There is a lot of support that hopefully we will move easily, but it is looking great. And at the end here, this is what the part looks like. Obviously, there are some layer marks and there are some imperfections, but we're hoping to cure this with our smoothing using the acetone. And as we have applied supports, what we need to do is pull these out. So I grab a pair of pliers and start pulling at this thing and it kind of self-destructs and you end up pulling all of the weak spots away and you're left with a part that needs a little touching up. So at this point in the project, I've now printed a few of these and we're gonna evaluate the worst one to the best. So this is my first one, which had square edges and a much thinner profile. And it worked well, but it needed beefing up. I could see that this would not be durable enough to hold a plate. So after a close up of this, we're going to throw it onto the fender and you're gonna see my biggest issue with it it does not fit very well. So those measurements I took were slightly off or there's a difference between the design and the print. But you can see this is just not acceptable and I was not having this. So this was my first one. Uh, the finish wasn't amazing, but I'm hoping we'll fix it with the smoothing. But let's move to my final print, the one I'm happy with and will be using. Here it is, the final design part which I'm happy with. Um, as you can see, we've got the rounded edges, everything's a bit thicker, and I've actually widened up the number plate fixing point. Um, one thing to note, obviously due to the supports, we are getting that rough edge, as you can see, but I'm really hoping that with some sandpaper, with some smoothing, we'll be able to get rid of this. I did print this part in multiple orientations, and did struggle to get that really smooth finish on the whole product. And one of the biggest changes, look at the fitment, it is far superior. We can click the part into the panel and it is not going anywhere. I do need to emphasize there is a small location feature on the bottom where we'll be placing an insert and then a small washer type clamp just to hold it in place. Like we say, we're not gonna be breaking any speed records, so I'm not worried about this thing flying off. And I do appreciate everyone. Right now, this part is looking a little rough around the edges, but I'm hoping once we get it tidied up with the acetone and some sanding, it will look really good. We have reached the point in the project where we have all of our prototyping and our final design sorted. And I have a print that I'm happy with. It's very functional, it looks good, it's printable and I'm hoping that we can smooth it. So as you've seen on the screen now, these are all of the iterations. I know sometimes in these videos, it looks like you design it, you print it and it works perfectly, but that is certainly not the case. There were many issues and things that I found out in the process. For example, this one, we have a lovely smooth top surface, but to get that, I had to flip the part and it meant that we completely lost the whole feature on the top. So there are pros and cons to each way of printing and you do find your limitations when designing. But that's all part of the fun. So we're at the point now where we have the print and now I want to focus on the ASA smoothing side. I want to take this rough part. I, in theory, I'm gonna hit it some sandpaper and then I'm hoping I will make a small chamber where I can drop over some acetone soaked tissues and smooth this part out. Luckily we do have a lot of early prototype parts so we'll use them for our practice before we go into the final thing. So the last part of this video is hopefully going to be a cool 
set of clips of me taking this part, smoothing it out and fitting it to the bike. It is now time to get this part looking a lot better and we're starting off with some 60 grit sandpaper. We're going to take that and knock those edges back and as you can see here, here is the before and we've got another part that I've done after. Just trying to get rid of all those high spots so when we apply the acetone it has less work to do. And for the acetone, I am purely using a technique shared online by other people. We've got a Pyrex dish, we've got our kitchen roll, and some magnets to hold it in place. Uh, very simple and easy to do at home. And then here we've got our acetone going into the bowl. I am being very generous with it and getting it around those kitchen towels as much as possible. And I'm going one step further by applying the acetone directly to the part, especially in these areas where it is quite uneven, I want to make sure it has the best chance. But we leave that for approximately 40 minutes and out comes a shiny part. It's not perfect, but it is a hell of a load better from where we started. Now that part is all looking good, we can focus on getting it mounted up to the number plate. So you can see here we've got our assembly with our spacer and screw and we're going to go about marking out this number plate so we can get a good centered bracket that will fit straight up to the bike. As you can see I do like to use the calipers as a piece of marking equipment especially on a soft alley plate you can easily mark the points and get the holes exactly where you need them. With the holes drilled, I can now fit this thing up. I am using some black number plate bolts and nuts to match up with the plate so you can't really see them. And that is the final assembly right there, ready to go on the bike. And I am very happy with how this has come out and I am ready to drop it on the bike. You can hear that nice snap there of the fit of the two mating parts and it clips right into the fender and we've got this nice spacer with a stainless steel bolt to hold it all in place and that pretty much guys brings us to the end of this video it has been very fun showing you the ins and outs of the design and manufacture of this part i really do hope you've enjoyed the video if you are interested in the file please drop me a message and i'll be more than happy to share it and also if you think there's a better way to print this do let me know i'm always up for finding out better ways and improving my parts and designs until the next one take it easy and I will catch you then.